This Week in IT. The initial rollout of Windows 11 24H2 isn't going as smoothly as it could, with users reporting numerous issues. Plus, Microsoft announces that support for third-party passkey providers is coming to Windows 11 soon. So stay tuned to find out all the latest news. Welcome to This Week in IT, the show where I talk about everything connected to Windows, Microsoft 365 and Azure. But before I get started today, I've got a quick favour to ask you. About 64% of the people that watched last week's video weren't subscribed to the channel. Now, as we go live today, we're on about 9,280 subscribers and I'd love it if we could push that up to over 9,300 this week. So if you'd like to see these weekly news updates from Petri.com, then please subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the bell notification to make sure that you don't miss out on the latest uploads. It's already been a couple of weeks on this channel since we announced the general availability of Windows 11 24H2. It's been a long time in the making and it's the first major architectural upgrade to Windows 11 in two years, so it is a big update. Now at the moment this is only automatically rolling out to users that have opted in to get an early preview experience of updates, despite the fact that this is technically generally available. Now, over the last couple of weeks, there have been numerous issues that users have been reporting, and I just want to go through a few of those now. Some users that have Intel SST sound drivers installed have been reporting a blue screen of death, so obviously that's quite a serious issue that could affect you, so be careful if you decide to upgrade to 24H2 manually. There have also been reports about Windows Update leaving about 8.6 gigabytes of files on users' drives and users basically not being able to delete that cache. Now, Microsoft has actually responded to that and has said that this is a bug in the disk cleanup program that it incorrectly reports that that cache file has been left behind when in fact it actually has been deleted. So I'm guessing that's going to be relatively easy for Microsoft to fix in a future update. Many users have been reporting issues with programs like Chrome and Edge, which obviously use the same rendering engine, that when you put the cursor into a text field on a web page, the mouse pointer disappears. So that's obviously something to do with the rendering engine there and hopefully Microsoft will be able to get that sorted out. Again, not a major issue but probably quite annoying. And probably the most serious issue after the blue screen of death problem with the Intel SST drivers is that some users are reporting that despite the fact Windows 11 shows that they're connected to the internet, regardless of whether they're using Ethernet or Wi-Fi, they're not, they don't actually have an internet connection. So obviously that's quite a serious issue that Microsoft needs to get sorted out. Now, if you're in an organization, you don't need to worry about any of this. And of course, if you're managing your devices, you get to choose when Windows 11 24H2 rolls out to your users and I reckon you're going to have to wait until at least next year before first of all Microsoft deems that this is you know, appropriate for wider distribution in organizations which usually they announce usually six to seven months after an update's general availability but I reckon you're going to have to wait a few months until we get a few cumulative updates applied to this thing to iron out some of these early kinks. Now, as I said in the video from two weeks ago, if you're on an unmanaged device, I don't recommend that you try and download and install this manually or that you opt in into these kind of preview updates to get them early. Let Microsoft roll this thing out via Windows Update, but not through that preview opt-in option and it will come to your device when it's ready because there's lots of checks that go on to determine is the device compatible, does it have any problematic drivers or software before Microsoft will allow this to be installed on your device and that is the best way to get this update. As I said at the beginning, it's a huge update. There are lots of architectural changes to Windows happening here. So Microsoft is taking a slowly, slowly approach with this and it's not a surprise that there are, of course, some bugs that users are discovering as it gets more widely deployed. But, you know, nothing really dramatic here happening. You just need to be very careful and wait 
when this update is ready to roll it out to users in your organization. There's been a lot of news over the last week about passkeys and some updates to the FIDO standard that are making passkeys portable so that you'd be able to essentially move them between one provider and another. So for instance, if you created a passkey with the help of Microsoft, at some point you'll be able to move that passkey and store it in Bitwarden or one pass or you know any of those other password managers that are supporting pass keys at this stage passkey adoption has been relatively slow but amazon announced this week that they have 175 million users using pass keys so whether that be on the amazon website or inside aws so that is really great news microsoft also had a couple of its own announcements let's start with the announcement connected to windows so windows are is soon going to get the ability to synchronize pass keys between devices. So if you use Microsoft as the provider for your pass keys, you'll be able to log in with your Microsoft account and have any pass keys that were created on a different device available for use on the device that you're currently logged into. At the moment, pass keys only work on the device which they were created on. So this is obviously going to be a great usability thing that's going to allow pass keys to get more widely adopted with consumers and in the enterprise. Currently, Windows 11 supports passkey use so that you can log on to Windows if you want to use Windows Hello, Windows Hello for Business. Also, passkeys are supported in the Microsoft Authenticator app. Also, Microsoft Edge supports passkeys so you can use it to log into Microsoft sites like office.com or AWS or google.com or any other site that supports passkeys. Windows Server Active Directory does support passwordless logon but only under specific circumstances you need to have your machine's hybrid join to enter ID. You need to have your Active Directory Federation services connected to enter ID as well. So the setup for that is quite complicated, but it is possible today. If your devices are enter ID joined, IT administrators can also set a policy that prevents you from logging onto services using a password. So essentially you'll be forced to use a passkey and that policy already exists today. At the moment, it's only possible to use Microsoft as a provider for passkeys if you want to log on to Windows or use Edge to log into a website. But Microsoft announced this week that they're adding API support to Windows 11 that will allow third parties like Bitwarden and other password managers to plug into Windows. And then you'll be able to use passkeys that are stored in those services to log into Windows, log into websites, all that kind of thing. And they announced that at Activate 2024 and did some demonstrations. So that essentially means that you'll be able to use the same pass key that you created on your mobile device, for instance, if you created it in Bitwarden or another password manager. They've also updated the user interface for pass keys. So you'll be able to choose different providers. So you can choose to use Microsoft as a provider, and you can also now choose a third party as a provider, you know, whatever that might be. So that interface has been updated to make that easy for end users. And Microsoft itself, as I said before, will also become a synchronized pass key provider. So if you're using a Microsoft account to store your pass keys, then you'll have access to them on whichever device that you sign into. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to see the demos at Activate 2024. They don't seem to be publicly available anymore. So Microsoft isn't really showing how this third party support for pass keys is going to work, but I'd be interested to see what that process actually looks like as we get closer to the release date of this coming to Windows Insiders. It's great to see that Microsoft and the industry as a whole is trying to make pass keys more usable, more flexible, like the synchronization and the portability all that kind of stuff is coming up. And I think that's really essential because this is complex. You know, users understand, here's my username, here's my password, this is what I do to log in. The problem with pass keys at the moment is because it's been a little bit limited to, uh, to how you can use it, of course, that restricts users' ability to work with a passkey once it's created because it's bound to a particular device. That, of course, is changing. But I still feel that this may all be a little bit 
too complex for the average person to understand. So this whole process of creating a pass key, storing it and having access to it at any time really needs to be simplified as much as possible. So the workflow to making those things happen is just a few easy steps that doesn't make the user scratch their head to think, how the hell does all of this work? Because if they can't understand, then they may decide they're just not going to use it because at least they understand what a username and a password is. Now, of course, pass keys are really intended to be something that's phishing resistant, that they're not prone as well to being stolen from memory uh, or, you know, when you're typing them out, you don't have to type a pass key, of course, where you type a password, it can much more easily be stolen and compromised. And I think it was IBM that were reporting, you know, there are thousands and thousands of you know, compromised password attacks successfully happening every minute or something like that. So the sooner that we can move to a more secure solution, the better. And Microsoft is really being pushing this. And I'm glad to see there's an industry-wide effort to make this a reality. And we're getting there very, very slowly, of course. There was also another announcement this week that HID and Microsoft are partnering to make uh, ID cards uh, a usable second factor for multi-factor authentication. So that's something that's also really useful. Of course, pass keys are really the panacea. We've already seen that multi-factor authentication doesn't always stand up. Certainly, it's you know better than just having a username and password. So I do encourage you to enable multi-factor authentication if you you can't go straight to pass keys at this stage. So anything to make the, any of these solutions more easily accessible and flexible and useful, uh, of course, that is great news. I'd love to know what you think about pass keys. Do you think that they're likely to be widely adopted? Are they still too complicated to use? What about your organization? Have you moved over to passwordless authentication? I'd love to know what you think about it all in the comments below. If you found this video useful, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up because it helps to get the video seen by more people on YouTube and to help us grow this channel. I'm going to leave you with another video on the screen now from last week about some new AI features that are coming to the OneDrive web client. So do check that out. But that's it from me this week and I'll see you next time.